Here in Studio One, I'm preparing this demo actually for another video, and I want to try out some variations on some of the parts in the chorus. So for example, I want to try some variations on the piano part and the bass guitar. So how could I do that? Well, I could save this as a new file, and then I could make my changes to the various parts, try listening to each by flicking between one file and another, and then when I'm happy, I could then transfer the parts I want from one file to another. If that sounds pretty messy to you, you're right, it is messy, which is why I wouldn't do that. Now, another thing that you may have tried doing in the past is actually taking the parts that you want to try some variations on and dragging them to the end of the project. So I'll grab the piano here and then I'll just shift click onto the bass guitar here and I'll hold Alt on my keyboard. That would be Option, I think, on the Mac and then drag that across to the end of my project over here. Yeah? And now I can try out my variations. You know, I could even duplicate them. So I press D on the keyboard to do that, by the way, and then try out some different variations and then drag them back to where I need them in the main track. That's probably a slightly better solution, but makes it really difficult if you're trying to manage many, many ideas and variations, which is why, thankfully, in Studio One, we have a feature called Scratchpad. <laughs> Hi folks, I'm Mike, and I hope you're well. I'd like you to think of Scratchpad as a kind of a playground, if you like, where you can mess around with and audition different ideas without affecting your main project. Or you could think of it as a kind of a super clipboard where you can store and organize different things that you may or may not use later on. That's up to you. But you create your first scratch pad by clicking on this icon at the top here. Now, when you do that, you'll see that the main view divides into two. On the left hand side, you've got your main project, which is there as normal. And then on the right hand side, you've got your scratch pad, which is currently empty. So let's go ahead and grab some things from the main project. I'll grab this piano, I'll hold shift on the keyboard and grab this bass part and also these drums as well. And all I need to do is actually just drag these across to the scratch pad like so. Don't need to hold down any special keys or anything like that. Now I want you to notice at this point the rulers at the top. If we look at the main ruler for the main project here, it's kind of grayed out, whereas on the scratch pad it looks normal. That means the scratch pad is currently active, meaning if I hit play now, we're going to hear the contents of the scratch pad like so. So if you want to go back to hearing what's in your main project, just click on the ruler where you want to start playing from in the main project and you'll see that it, it's no longer grayed out. It looks normal now. And if I hit play, it will play my main project. Superman. Okay, so that's how we flip between the two. Let's go back to the scratch pad. And one of the things I might like to do is actually get rid of the second note of the bass guitar there. So I'm just gonna expand it a little bit, uh, zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna switch off snap for the moment and just highlight that second note on the bass guitar and press delete. And then I'll go ahead and uh, select both of those events and press control B to bounce them together. So now I've got this variation um, of this bass guitar here. Now, if I wanted to use that in my main project, I could just grab it and drag it and drop it to where I want to use it in my main project like so. So it's as easy as that to drag things between the main project and your scratch pad. Now, it may be that I want to try out even more ideas and we could go back to doing as we did before and selecting everything that we've got here, yeah, and then pressing, say, D on the keyboard. That's duplicated those across. And we could do that as many times as we want and try them out there, and that's fine. I'll show you a better way of doing that a little bit later on. But another thing we could do is create some other scratch pads. We can actually create as many scratch pads as we want. Now, with this one, you can see at the top here, it's called Scratch Pad 1. So let's select this menu item here. And what we can do is actually uh, duplicate this current scratch pad. Now, I should note while I'm here, 
here, there's a couple of other options um, or three other options. We could rename it, okay? So you could name it to something more meaningful, which can be very, very useful. Or you could add a blank scratch pad here, an empty one, or you could delete the current one. As I say, we're gonna duplicate this one. So I'll click on that one. So you can see a new name has appeared automatically at the top here, scratch pad two. And let's say I'm going to, um, in this variation, I'm just gonna make this piano part start a little bit later on. Not that I would do that for this song, but it's fine for demonstration purposes. So you can see um, that if I actually press play, I can then switch between the two scratch pads without having to sort of stop and start. Let's do that. So that could be a very quick way of, of auditioning some different ideas. And pretty much that's all there is to Scratchpad. But I reckon Scratchpad gets a lot more powerful when you use it in conjunction with the Arranger track. And there's a couple of different ways I'd like to show you how useful that is. Now, depending on how you've got your view set up, you may or may not be able to see this little icon here to open the Arranger track. If you can't see it, then just go across to this icon here, click on that and then go down and click on Arranger. Now this is not gonna be an Arranger track full tutorial, that's in another video, uh, but I'll show you some of the basics here. I'm gonna start off by holding Control on my keyboard, that would be Command on the Mac, and then dragging out an area here. This is called a section in the Arranger, and this one's automatically be called, being called Intro, which it isn't actually, but it's fine, it can be named Intro. Um, we'll drag out another one holding Control or Command, Again, and this one is called Verse, and we'll do the same again over here. I'll drag out this one. This one's been called Chorus. Like I say, we can rename those. I'll show you that later, but for the moment, that's absolutely fine. Let's look at this Chorus section here. I'll just drag this across, and then I'm gonna right-click on the Chorus and go down to Copy to New Scratch Pad. So it creates a new scratch pad, and as we can see, it is now actually copied all of the contents of that chorus into the scratch pad, which is really handy and makes it very easy as a starting point for our new variations. Now we may want to handle uh, various variations on the same scratch pad. We can easily do that by actually grabbing uh, this chorus uh, section at the top here, holding Alt on the keyboard, or that'll be Option on the Mac, and then just dragging across here. And you can see it easily um, just duplicates the whole thing across. I'll do it again for a third one, and then just zoom out so that we can see them all. So this could be the basis of three different variations um, for our main track. And let's say I wanna try out some different ideas. Let's say on this first variation here, actually let's go ahead and rename these. So I'm just gonna um, right click on the section here and just go to the name here, yeah, and let's call it um, V1. Yeah, and the same, right click, call this one, um, just double click on the letters there, um, V2, and then you've guessed it, this one, V3, okay. So I can clearly see which one is which here with my variations. I'm gonna go ahead and do this first variation. I don't want any of these electric guitars in there, so I'll just get rid of those, okay. Um, and then I'm thinking for the second variation, you know, I perhaps don't want all of these harmony vocals. Let's just get rid of those. And then whatever for the, the third variation, perhaps we don't want the organ and the piano in there. So we've got three distinct uh, different things. Now we can audition these quite easily if we just uh, double click on the actual section at the top here. Superman, never really a Superman. So you can see I went between the three different ones there. And as I clicked on each one, it immediately started playing from the beginning of that section. By the way, if you want to have a bit of a variation on that behavior, what you can do is go ahead here and open up the inspector. I'm just going to click on the eye icon here to do that. 
and then if you see at the top of there it's got sync mode and it's off at the moment you could change it to say one bar so what that means is when you double click for that play behavior on these different sections it's going to wait till it gets to the end of the current bar before it goes to the new one so it sort of cues it if you like so we'll start off i'll go from one and then to two and then to the three Superman. So you can see it sort of waited till it got to the end of the bar before it switched the new one. So it's quite a, uh, a nice way to audition different things. We'll get rid of that. So once I've decided, look, you know, I think I want chorus two in this case to be my main chorus. What I can do now using these sections is just grab it and drag it and drop it onto the original chorus over here, which I'll do. Yeah, and you can see that it's done that. It's got rid of the things that I got rid of with there. Um, I'd probably have to do some tidying up, as you can see, but it's a really quick and easy way to try out something different and then finally apply it to your main project. Now, the Arranger track itself is an amazing feature in Studio One that I think everyone should know about. So if you want to learn about that now, take a look at this video right here.